Hey guys, uh, welcome to my new Blu-ray collection update video. I haven't done one of these in a while because I've been posting other kind of things online and different short films and stuff that I've been working on as well. Um, yeah, so feel free to check out that stuff. Um, this is going to be my Blu-ray update uh, for pretty much everything I've bought in the past couple of weeks since coming back to uni for my final term of uni. Okay, so we're going to start with normal releases and slip covers, then to Steelbooks then go through Artificial Eye, Arrow Video, Arrow Academy, uh, Master of Cinema and then BFI Collection. So here we go. So first up is the kind of standard releases that I bought this term. All of these pretty much have uh, slip cases anyway so they look, they'll look nice with, with part of the rest of the collection. Uh, the first film that I've got to show you guys is Whiplash. This film is really really good. Uh, I saw it early this year. Uh, it was on one of the cinemas near where I live in Canterbury and it was absolutely stunning. I was blown away by it and I absolutely adored the film. Incredible acting, incredible editing and a very very well rounded story. Uh, superb, su it's just absolutely brilliant. If you haven't seen it you should. Uh, it won Best Supporting Actor and uh, three Oscar winners and three um, BAFTA winners as well so I'd really really highly recommend checking it out because it's really good. Next up a film that I haven't seen uh, David Cronenberg's Maps to the Stars. Um, this is a film that came out again either early this year or last, uh, late last year. I haven't seen it yet but I've heard really really good things. The reviewer that I trust a lot on YouTube and BBC uh, reviewer really seemed to enjoy this film I think. So uh, there's the Maps to the Stars. Very nice slipcover. Hopefully the film's good. Uh, unfortunately when I got it from HMV, I don't know if you'll be able to see in the video but it's I, well whilst peeling off the sticker it peeled off some of the gloss on the case which was rather disheartening but I can probably live with it. Next up is Birdman. This film is great. I'm sure a lot of you people have already seen this alongside um, you know, Whiplash. This is one of the highlights of the start of the year for me. Uh, incredible, incredible film. I got the HMV special edition kind of which comes with a, uh, a slip cover and inside it also comes with postcards as well which I haven't opened yet because I don't really want to. Uh, but there are postcards in it. Um, for the HMV edition. Bloody good film. I've seen it um, twice now, saw it once in the cinema and I watched it again to see if it hold up and it really does. It's an excellent film I highly recommend. Next up, another great film I saw this year, started this year, Nightcrawler. Jake Gyllenhaal is incredible in this film. This, this film is really really good as well. It's one of those films that kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, I just saw a random trailer for it and thought why, why not go see it with one of my friends and uh, we both walked away from it thinking this is great you know it's incredible really really good cinematography incredible acting interesting story with very very uh, kind of the subtext in this film is really good as well next up is the only studio Ghibli film that I've got this term it is from up on Poppy Hill I haven't seen this uh, I am a fan of some of the other Ghibli films though I do really like My Neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away I have not seen a lot of them though I'm not a fan of Ponyo there's the inside. It looks really, really nice. It's kind of like artwork, and uh, as you'd expect, Studio Ghibli. Um, this one actually came with um, postcards as well in there, which are gorgeous. Um, so I was very, very happy to pick that up. Very, very pleased with that pickup. It was quite cheap as well. It was about ten pounds for the kind of limited edition collection thing, whatever it is. But it comes with DVD as well, which I won't use. But you know, that's also very nice as well. Next up, I've only got two steelbooks this term. First of all, it's a film that I've got no idea what it's about. I got it just because it was a uh, steelbook and I saw it was cheap. Uh, and it's With Nail and I. This got a, um, a release on Arrow Academy, I believe. And then that edition of Arrow Academy was going on Amazon a couple of weeks ago for about 70 quid. So I saw the Blu-ray steelbook and thought, yeah, well, this, is, this was only like £4.50. So this is really ridiculously cheap. And it's Arrow... Uh, sorry, Studio Canal releases this this edition, but the other one is Arrow Academy. I don't know about the special features, I don't know about the film, but I'm looking forward to seeing it when I do. Next up is True Detective, the television show. Um, I wasn't a massive fan of this, I have to say. It's a, it's a show that one of my friends highly, highly recommended to me. And um, I can understand why you'd, why people would like it, but for me it doesn't really sit very well. It, for me it was a bit too slow and a bit too philosophical at times but only after the first couple of four episodes you realise that's the character rather than the writing of the show, if that makes sense. You kind of understand that the character is like that rather than the, the writers just being a little bit like high and mighty about everything, which is kind of what I felt like. Beautiful steelbook though, really, really nice edition. 
um, has three discs inside of it, um, all of which are stunning transfers. Uh, the soundtrack in this show is very interesting. The commentary on the extras, there's only commentary on two of the episodes which I've watched, which I found really interesting and then was upset to find that there wasn't any more uh, than just that, which is weird. Um, so I was a bit disappointed with that. Okay, so sorry about that, but my microphone was acting weird. If this is in the video, then yeah, I've obviously changed the settings a bit so you can hear me. And um, I'm going to be going on to talk about the artificial eye films that I've got this week. Okay, so the first artificial eye film that I've got this term is uh, The Cheer and Horse. I watched a bit of it last uh, last year last year uh, in one of my studies uh, classes which I found really cool. Uh, I've only seen the opening five minutes of this film which is one continual shot which I found really really interesting which kind of is the same uh, in like, idea as Birdman maybe. Um, but yeah I'm looking forward to watching all of that all the way through. Next up is a film that I haven't seen called Ida. Uh, this is a Polish film. Uh, it's meant to be very, very good. It won the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film in 2015. Um, so, 2015, sorry. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. I saw it advertised and the cinematography looked absolutely beautiful in the adverts that I saw. So uh, hopefully it's good. It's a bit weird. This this kind of term, I've ended up buying films which are rather sexual in nature. I didn't really mean or plan to do this, but the next couple of films are, you know, kind of about sex and then later on I've also got other films which are about sex uh, which is also uh, wasn't planned but has just happened uh, first off is uh, Exotica by Atom Egoyen I haven't seen this film at all uh, I've got no idea what it's about other than it's probably quite sexual um, so yeah I'm looking forward to checking that out uh, Peter Strickland's The Duke of Burgundy uh, which is a film about two lesbians and a BDSM relationship uh, this film is really interesting, uh, really, really artistically delivered. Uh, it has its own kind of feel. The entire film, you can almost smell it in some kind of cases. Uh, it's one of those films where you you aren't really asked to partake in the viewing. You're there to experience it. And there's one segment in the middle of which which you you kind of is a full on throwback to the work of like Stan Brakhage, uh, who did like art artistic kind of films, uh, with where he cuts lots of different frames of things together particularly his piece of work called Mothlight is referenced heavily in this film but it's a really good film um, you really really start to explore their relationship these two characters and the uh, it's just a playful film I don't know why it's rated 18 though there wasn't actually any nudity in the film uh, only occasional instances where it's a, it kind of shows you what could be happening off screen with sound effects rather than what is happening on screen and maybe that's why it's been given an 18. I don't think it needs an 18 right, maybe a 15 would be would be absolutely fine. Next up, a film that I already own but I don't own this edition of it. This is Nymphomaniac, the director's cut. Because of the really nice slipcover, I don't know whether this is HMV exclusive slipcover. I know that the first slipcover where it came out was a H, uh, HMV exclusive. But yeah, this is the 80 minutes, added 80 minutes footage, director's cut original cut of the film very happy to have owned that I have already seen it however um, I saw it on American Netflix because it's been on there and it still is on there actually I think so if you've got uh, Netflix and you can make it uh, American I would recommend checking it out I really really like the film and I've got a review on my channel if you wanted to check it out but this this version of the film adds uh, 80 minutes more uh, above characters layers additional story kind of content which I felt was really necessary in the film uh, I really really enjoyed the film and uh, yeah I'd recommend checking it out uh, but obviously check out the four hour cut first just in case uh, you don't like it and I wouldn't recommend spending your money on it just in case you wouldn't but in my review I think I said it was one of my favourite films now uh, the first uh, when I saw the four hour cut I thought it was absolutely spectacular this cut's really good as well so I check, I'd check. i recommend checking it out okay okay. next up is a film which doesn't have a slip cover or isn't really part of any collection so it's just kind of on its own here uh, Suspiria, Dario Argento's Suspiria the horror film Good film. Uh, I started, this time I've started to get into watching more Giallo films and his work in particular. Uh, the first piece of film I saw of his was uh, Inferno, which I've got here as well, which I found was really, really interesting, really inventive, playful. The cinematography, the lighting, the editing in this film was really, really interesting. Uh, something which uh, kind of goes across into Suspiria as well. The transfer of both the films are pretty good. Um, and I, it was the first time I was really, really like 
you know, looking at uh, Argento and seeing what his work was like. And I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it's something that I'd never really explored before. Obviously, I liked horror films. But yeah, uh, Inferno uh, and Suspiria are both... I really liked Inferno. Um, the only issue with Inferno is that the story is terrible. The acting is pretty horrendous. Um, apart from that, the style of it and the music and the mise-en-scene and stuff kind of bring you through the film. I really, really liked the style and how he kind of uses it to his advantage in these both both these films. Next up, another Argento film. Uh, we've got Phenomenon uh, with uh, Jennifer Connelly from Requiem for a Dream, you might have noticed, and uh, some of Aronofsky's other films, which uh, she's also in. Uh, this is a really it's kind of odd film. I mean, after watching Inferno and Suspiria, I would kind of got into the, the mindset that Argento was making interest, interestingly lucking films and the story wasn't really important and uh, mainly style over substance. And, you know, this kind of still follows in that kind of footsteps. It, this is really stylistic, but in a kind of normalised normalized American horror kind of way. Um, there are some fantastic special effects in this film. Uh, but the, the plot again kind of goes from something that doesn't make any sense to something that makes even less sense. And it, the way that it jumps through the hoops to get to all these places um, really wasn't greatly interesting. So there are a couple of scenes in this film which were really like unnerving, uh, particularly one surrounding an indoor swimming pool. The Cat of Nine Tails is another Dario Argento film I picked up this term. Unfortunately, the cover of this is the classic Arrow, uh, Arrow video cover for all their Blu-rays, which I've also got a copy of um, Battle Royale, which kind of has the same same cut thing, which is annoying because it doesn't really fit together with the other Argento films that I've bought this term because they're all the old, the, the new version of the Arrow video boxes, but I can kind of deal with it. Uh, the weird thing about this is when you put it in your machine, uh, the normal way it plays the film is with English subtitles and Italian recording but when I watched the special features of it it kind of suggested that the recording was originally English and then they subbed it but dubbed it in Italian as well and then they which it was just kind of confused me next up another Italian giallo film Bloodbath by Mario Bava this isn't Bloodbath it just says Bloodbath it's got loads of different names including the twitch of the death nerve I think is probably the name it's most famous for. It's also called A Bay of Blood, but I've switched the cover around because I think that cover is really cool. Um, far cooler than the one that they actually offer. Film was really enjoyable. You can see where slasher films have got their influences from, particularly like Friday the 13th and stuff like that. Uh, and I'd recommend that because it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that film a lot. Next up, another film I haven't seen. Um, Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits. I have absolutely no idea what this film's about. And uh, I look forward to watching it sometime. It was cheap and it was on Amazon, so I thought, why not buy it? So, I've only got two Arrow Academy Blu-rays this term to show you guys. Uh, the Long Goodbye by uh, Robert Altman. I've no idea what this is about. It looks really nice. Again, with all the Arrow things, you've got really nice box art, really nice inside art. You know, they've got the the disc there and the booklet, which is brilliant. The next uh, Arrow Academy release I've got is The Killing and Killer's Kiss. Both are part of this uh, single thing, a single disc, yeah, single disc uh, released by Arrow Academy. Uh, very nice artwork on the front, and again comes with a booklet. I'd highly recommend watching The Killing if you haven't seen it. Uh, the render of this Blu-ray is really nice as well. Uh, I already own the DVD of this film, and I wanted to buy it again on Blu-ray because it's so fantastic. Uh, and the DVD I bought originally was about three pounds. So yeah, go out and watch this. It's one of Kubrick's earliest films, and it really, really is incredible. You can see the makings of a truly incredible director right here right now the film's great there isn't really any problem with it that i have and you can definitely see where nolan got his influence in the start the, the opening of the dark knight onto the masters of cinema collection films that i've got this term first up is a film i have not seen floating weeds by uh ozu uh, Ozu's a filmmaker I've heard a lot of good things about. I haven't seen any of his work yet, but I've been told to check it out. Again, massive cinema release, so you've got a really nice booklet, and uh, the disc art is nice as well. Next up is Howard Hawke's Red River, uh, a film that I've not seen, but I've heard is very good. Uh, in fact, at the back of uh, the new Sight and Sound 
uh, has a little review of it, kind of a discussion on, on the film itself. So I'm looking forward to reading that after watching it. As again, the inside artwork for these things are incredible. The booklet's cover is really, really stunningly nice. Uh, and obviously it's a single disc edition, but it's I'm looking forward to watching this film. I've heard very good things about it. Next up, a film that I've been tempted to buy for a while, purely because it's a massive cinema film. Uh, but this is Samuel Fuller. Uh, it's his film called White Dog, which is something. It's a film that's interested me since I found out that it was part of the Ithmaster Cinema Collection. But it's also a film that I've um, noticed has a really interesting kind of premise. It's about a dog who's been bred to attack black people, and uh, the film is about a girl who finds him or looks after him, and then tries to train him against doing so. Which I, I think is a really interesting idea. I'm looking forward to watching it again. It's massive cinema, so I, I'm, I'm expecting some incredible things. Um, this is a two disc edition. The uh, book, the uh, artwork for the disc is all right, uh, but the booklet artwork is fantastic. That looks really, really visually interesting to me. If the film's anything like that, I'm really, really going to look forward to this because um, I think that's that's incredibly interesting. Again, another film I haven't seen. It might, it might be worth pointing out that I haven't seen any of these massive cinema films. I've bought them to watch uh, eventually. Uh, and as, uh, as part of the collection, but is Billy Wilder's Ace in the Hole. Uh, I saw a review for this a while back and it basically said it was really, really good. And uh, I've seen Billy Wilder's Lost Weekend and of course Double Indemnity, which I thought was incredible. So I'm, I was looking forward to watching this and picking up whenever it got cheap. Um, this is a triple disc edition, you know, the, the box art obviously is a shot from the film and the uh, disc art has a picture of Ace from a pack of cards on, which is quite interesting. Uh, I've also heard that this is, works as kind of a, a good follow-up or film to watch alongside, well, after, back-to-back well, uh, -back with Citizen Kane, because it follows um, the story of someone uh, who's writing things in newspapers and the kind of manipulation of the truth and things like that, so I, I'm probably going to end up watching it after or before Citizen Kane, or watching this and then thinking, do I... Do I feel like watching Citizen Kane afterwards? Because, you know, you should only really watch films when you're in the mood to watch them. Next up, Federico, Fel Feder Federico Fellini's Satyricon. Um, Fellini is a filmmaker that I've been interested in since seeing Armagh Cord in my first year of university. Since then, I've only seen one other of his films which is eight and a half which is absolutely amazing i do need to check out a lot of his other work so i've been picking them up occasionally and gradually getting a collection of his work together um the only film that i think is out now on blu-ray which i don't own of his is uh the clowns which was a television movie as well that he released uh i don't know when he did it but it's it's one of the masters in my collection i haven't got yet but yeah i'm looking forward to watching this uh according to the like 18 rating thing on the back it's gonna be quite sexual um i'm not really like i wasn't planning on watching it because of that but fine if uh, fellini wants to do that fellini can do that and obviously that's a really weird image on the front cover i don't know what that relates to but i'm looking forward to watching this the last master of cinema film in this collection update is wooden crosses a uh French uh, war film. Uh, I've read up a review in Sight and Sound and they said this film was really uncompromisingly great and uh, really quite ahead of its time as well in re regards to sound editing and the way that sound is used within it. Uh, again, Master of the Cinema Collection, you can expect good things. The artwork on the booklet is really nice, as is the discs. Uh, this is a three disc, two DVD and one Blu-ray edition collection um, and I'm looking forward to watching that when I get around to it. So finally we get round to my BFI Blu-ray collection of films that I bought this term. First of which is Alice by Jan Svanmaker. I don't know if I've said the director's name correctly but this film's really good. Uh, it's really 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 creepy though. Unbelievably creepy and weird and it's just interesting. Uh, the One of the things that I found about the film was it as a kid, I don't know whether I would have been terrified of it or would have just gone with it. But as an adult, looking at it, knowing that this is rated PG and for kids, is something that's really odd and, you know, really kind of disturbing about it. The, the, if you don't know about it, the animals in the film, the white rabbit is a taxidermied kind of actual body of a rabbit with fake eyes put on top. And as he's running around, the sawdust is falling out of his body and he's trying to like put it back in combine that with creatures which are animated made up of actual bones of creatures crawling around with eyes and a real life girl that turns into a model 
doll version of herself when she drinks a potion. It's one of the more weird kind of iterations of Alice in Wonderland that I've seen, and it's really good film. I really do need to check it out again. It is on American Netflix though, I believe. That's where I first watched it and then I decided I wanted to have this in my collection because I really enjoyed it as well so I look forward to re-watching it, some of the special features. Next up is a Kenneth Anger kind of collection of short films. I've got no idea um, what most of these are like. I've only I've seen three of them so far. I saw Fireworks, Purse Moment and Rabbit's Moon. Rabbit's Moon I thought was incredibly interesting and detailed and kind of open to interpretation. Fireworks was a bit weird, uh, I think was about gang rape, but I'm not completely sure about that. I'm pretty sure it was, I don't know, it was just a bit odd. Uh, very interestingly shot and edited though, which is something that I'll take away from these uh, short films uh, if I carry on to watch them, which I plan to. And at first moment I didn't like, but I don't know what the rest of it's like, but it's part of the BFI, so the, obviously the uh, the renders and the, the transfers are really, really nice, really, really high quality Blu-ray, and I, I look forward to watching them at some point in time. Next up. Pierre Paolo Pasolini's Trilogy of Life. I've got all three of these on Blu-ray. Uh, the Decameron is the first one. This also comes with uh, a load of notes from a film that he didn't make, I think, called African Oriesta. Um, I don't know what this film's about, but after buying it, I realised it was about strong sex and nudity. Uh, again, more films about sex that I bought this term without realising they were going to be about sex before buying. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to watching this. The only Pasolini film I've seen is Salo still, or Salo, uh, which you can see a review on my channel. I really, really enjoyed that film. Uh, I don't know if enjoyed is the right word, but appreciated and I found that film really, really, really interesting. Next up is the uh, Canterbury Tales. Uh, this will be interesting because I currently live in Canterbury. Uh, I don't know what the Canterbury Tales are, but again, looking on the back, it's to do with sex and kind of just just sex in general. So I'll look forward to watching that. Finally, Arabian Nights. I saw a clip of this on um, Mark Cousins' uh, documentary called uh, the, Fil the Story of Film and Odyssey. Uh, an incredible documentary. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. Again, that's on American Netflix. If you're really interested in films and World Center in particular, you should definitely check that out. Next up is the second to last item. It's a box set of Roberto Rossellini's War Trilogy. This is another BFI release, as you can see. Uh, comes out with a really, really nice box. Uh, stylish. Um, I don't know how to describe it really, but it is really nice. Uh, comes with Three films, Rome, Open City, Piazza, and Germany Year Zero, alongside a booklet as well, which is there. Stunning edition. Uh, I believe this is limited as well. I don't know how many are actually made, because I was... Whenever the release came out, I saw it was on Amazon, and I was like, okay, well, it's about 40 quid on there, uh, so I don't really want to pick it up for 40 quid, because I don't know whether I'm going to enjoy it. went into HMV, and they were selling it for 30, so I thought, why not get it? And this is limited edition. Like It says here it's limited, but there are still copies of it around in different places that I've seen, um, like HMV and other shops like that, so I don't know whether it is actually limited or whether they carried on releasing more of them after the first batch of them, if you know what I mean. I haven't seen any of the films in it, but I really do plan. I really am looking forward to watching them uh, when I'm in the mood. Um, Rossellini is a filmmaker. I've never seen any of his work before, so uh, I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And lastly, and uh, not least, it's the Alan Rob Grillet. I probably pronounced that horrifically because he's French. I kind of struggle with pronunciation of French words, but yeah, six films of his from 1963 to 1974. As you can see, the cover of the uh, box art, there's like a woman. I uh, I initially thought this woman was covered in blood. Uh, she's not, it's paint. And again, this is another <laughs> bunch of films which are about sex. And uh, this these kind of films were recommended to me by one of my lecturers um, to kind of broad, broaden my horizon of like the films I watch. I always ask, like, what kind of films can I watch? What films should I watch? Have I seen films by this director? Which directors are interesting? And he recommended uh, this because he, he said that the films were really good and they'd be up my right up my street. Uh, I've seen Trans Europa Express. I watched that last night. I thought that film was fantastic. Really very interesting. The subtext in it was also very interesting. And it was a film about a film being made uh, whilst the film was happening kind of thing. It's hard to explain, but it comes across so easily when you watch it. Do you understand it? Incredibly um, 
detailed in the way it's shot as well everything in this film is shot really really stunningly um, the there's a lot of use of reflections and the kind of uh, way that the camera favors the erotic nature of like women and the way that they're like portrayed on screen is rather I don't know whether it's controversial but the way that it's done is rather gentle in its portrayal of women it's more like a, it's much more sexual than the way that the women in like nymphomaniac is are portrayed so uh, yeah but the this box comes with some really nice box art as well uh, you can imagine my reaction to opening this up after knowing not nothing about it uh, and seeing women in cages and thinking why like what have I got myself into I didn't realize that any of this was about uh, comes with a little booklet as well again BFY comes with essays from them and uh, yeah I've seen like I said I've seen Trans Europa Express which I really enjoyed I do look forward to watching the rest of them so that's been my blu-ray update for the past couple of weeks hope you enjoyed it if there are any films that you have seen that I haven't have got you can like talk about them in the comment section if you want to recommend me any films in the mass of cinema bfi arrow academy arrow video you know uh artificial eye collection which i don't already own or think that i might not own and might like please also comment them uh, i'll probably do more of these in the future obviously as my blu-ray collection expands but right now this is all i've got so uh yeah thanks for watching and comment rate and subscribe if you liked the video